When we talk about uh, weed management, in most agronomic crops, producers tend to think of weed management as a season-long process. They can have materials that they can put out before they plant, pre-plant applications. They can come back right after they plant, make pre-emergence applications. Both of these types of applications have soil residual activity. In other words, they're put out before the weeds come out. Early in the seasons, as weeds start emerging through these treatments, they have options to come over the top, called early post-emergence applications, mid-post-emergence applications, even right before their harvest. If any weeds escape these earlier treatments and tend to, if they are left out there, can tend to things like morning glory, uh, larger pigweed tend to decrease your harvest efficiency. So there's also options available to make uh, applications of herbicides prior to cutting the crop or harvesting the crop, which can help desiccate those weeds and help efficiency, harvest efficiency. Sweet potato producers don't have these options. Essentially, they're broadleaf weed control options in once the crop starts vining and covering the middle of the row. Weed control options for broad leaves are limited to applications pre-plant, before you transplant the sweet potatoes, and immediately after you transplant the sweet potatoes. The options that we currently have uh, from a pre-plant standpoint are three herbicides, Valor herbicide, Reflex herbicide, and a newer herbicide which is labeled just this year, Optogen herbicide. Valor has been the standard that most people have used for a long time now. Very good herbicide, provides us good weed control of most of the broad leaves that we have issues with. Uh, two very problematic weeds we have in sweet potato are nuts edge, yellow nuts edge, and smell melon as well. Valor does a good job on smell melon. Of the options that we have, Valor is probably the best thing out there. Uh, the reflex that I mentioned has a little bit of, of activity on smell melon and a little bit of activity on nuts edge. The rate that it's supplied at one pint is probably on the lower end where you're going to see real good activity, but it does give us some suppression for our other options over the top once we transplant to help out. Optogen, as I mentioned, is a newer herbicide this year. We're getting a kind of a good feel on it. Uh, bicyclopyrone is the active ingredient in it. It's also the active ingredient in a corn herbicide, Acuron. Uh, does a good job on a number of weeds. Uh, most of the annual weeds that we have looked at it uh, on in, in sweet potato, it does a good job on. It tends to be a little weaker on slender amaranth from what we're seeing. Has a uh, decent grass activity, a uh, little bit of nuts edge activity, but nothing like another herbicide that I'm going to talk about. Uh, one smell melon area that we have, it did not do a good job for us this year. So from a problematic weed standpoint and the, the more common weeds that we control currently, it doesn't seem like oxygen is going to be that silver bullet. That one thing we can put out pre-transplant that is going to control all our weed spectrum that we have. That's, that's not going to, going to really add anything from, from that standpoint. Tolerance on a sweet potato was very good. It's a bleacher, very much like command. In other words, you're going to see whitening of plants that, that it's, uh, it's been treated with. Uh, as I said, it's pre-transplant. The potatoes tend to tolerate it very well. So we're trying to get a, a good handle on it. We'll see, you know, take these plots to yield and see exactly what it does. But it's a, another option we have out there. But as far as being a silver bullet that I think is going to replace something in your herbicide rotation, I don't see that as an option as far as gaining anything else more than what we already have. It's a different mode of action pre-transplant. So that may help us with some resistance issues further down the line. Uh, once you've transplanted your sweet potatoes, you have a couple of options you can go with currently. Uh, Command is a standby which many people have used for a number of years, and also Dual Magnum. Uh, both of those provide excellent activity on most of the grass species we have problems with in, uh, in sweet potato, you know, brown top millet, barnyard grass, uh, goose grass, things like that do a very good job on it. Uh, Dual is a fantastic, Dual Magnum is a fantastic herbicide. It also provides control of a lot of the, the annual small seeded broad leaves we had, carpet weed, pig weed, things like that. Command can be a little bit weaker on the pig weed, so the Dual tends to pick it up. We've had a, a number of producers this year that have uh, combined the two, the Command and Dual, applied right after transplanting, 
and uh, it's been a very good punch for them. I think in my opinion, what I've seen in my plots and what it will allow them to do uh, is maybe reduce that rate of command. Command is uh, you know, not the cheapest herbicide out there that they can use, but traditionally it's been used at higher rates, two and a half pints, 2.6 pints, three pints, the highest label rate. Because you don't have a lot of options to come back later on, you have nothing over the top of sweet potatoes once it's growing that you can spray to take out broad leaves, nut sedge, things like that. So you gotta get most of your punch before that, that crop starts vining and covering the middles. So they wanna go with the, the higher rates of things that are on the label and label for sweet potato to get as much weed control as they can get. Uh, there's been concern in the past with the dual magnum, making those applications right after transplanting, getting a heavy rain on lighter soils, concentrating that herbicide underground around a developing root and causing issues. Uh, it's been too good a herbicide in my trials and I think people are seeing to not utilize it somewhere in the system. If producers are concerned with that potential injury right after transplant, you can wait 10, 15 days after transplanting safe to apply over the top of the sweet potatoes. The thing is you have to beat the nut sedge out of the ground. It's the most effective thing we currently have on nut sedge. I mentioned the reflex, which is applied pre-transplant earlier. It provides you good suppression of yellow nut sedge. It followed by a post-transplant application of dual magnum will do an excellent job of knocking back your yellow nut sedge and causing it uh, not to be an issue. Uh, but like I said, a lot of people are making those, those combinations together. I think it allows us maybe to reduce those command rates. The thing that command brings to the table over the dual magnum is that it's very water soluble. Uh, the dual magnum is a group 15 herbicide. Uh, requires, has a moderate water solubility, so requires about a good half inch rainfall or irrigation to properly activate it. Command is very, very water soluble, so you're gonna need a quarter of an inch, a lot less rainfall. So that's one benefit it does have. If you, you apply your command or you apply dual, uh, if you'd apply them separately on, on, let's say, different fields, you know, you get a tenth of an inch rain come through 1500s. So you're going to get good, good activation on that command, whereas a dew you won't. So you're going to see better grass activity. So the combination of the two, although they have a lot of similarities in what they control, the water solubility to command being able to be activated will help with your grasses where the dew will take a little bit more to get activated, whereas the dew will provide you some nut sedge control and better pigweed control. So those are a, a very good combination. Uh, after that, there's nothing legally we can apply over the top. So anything that you don't get from a, a, a pre-transplant or a post-transplant application, you're essentially limited to a, uh, a tillage operation, a lay-by operation through the field where you're tilling the field right before the vines start covering it up. And after that point, at that standpoint, once the vines start covering the middle, you're relying on them shading out, which they do. If you do a very good, effective job pre-transplant and post-transplant of eliminating your weeds, the uh, potato plants do a very good job of providing you natural residual or the shade. Any grasses that do bust through, we do have four or five different options. We can apply over the top, have no activity on broad leaves whatsoever, so it's not gonna get any pigweed that escapes, any nut sedge that escapes, but any grass that out there, that's out there, these grass herbicides do a very, very good job of being able to pull those back. So that's another reason we may be able to lower our command rates on, on the front. So if we do get any escapes on the back end, we can effectively pull those through. So essentially what we're missing right now in our sweet potato weed management program is maybe a post-emergence herbicide in that 21 to 35 day range. Something that we could pull in those weeds that happen to escape our earlier applications from a broadleaf standpoint. Something that might have some nut sedge activity. That's what we're currently missing right now. With the limited amount of sweet potato acres throughout the United States, there's not a whole lot of incentive of putting that type of effort, that time, those resources, that money into developing new compounds. So Hopefully there's something that, that, that may be coming down the pike that one company is working on that'll help us there. We have put in with uh, IR4 to possibly look at uh, Linex herbicide. It's an old soybean herbicide uh, to see if, if we can maybe get it registered through IR4. That's the route we went in in, in having reflex labeled in sweet potatoes. Uh, it's still in the, the lab portion and there are, there are some issues that are sort of delaying that particular process. But that is one herbicide along with Valor that does an excellent job on smell melon. We've looked at it. I'm, I'm interested in, in the prospect of having it in our, in our rotation as well because it brings a completely different 
mode of action than anything else we have. So we're, keep, we're keeping relying on the same modes of action over and over and over, and that will uh, over time lead to resistance issues. And with the limited amount of herbicides we have, you know, in other crops, if you lose one herbicide to resistance, well, you have 20 others to take its place. And you can always co-apply these together. So you have what seems like an unlimited option, although resi weed resistance is catching up in those crops as well. And sweet potato, when you lose one of, of five herbicides you had, 20% of your options are gone right there. So it's something we can, we can possibly use that line X, like I said, to help out with the smell melon and also uh, increase the longevity of the, the products we have by rotating modes of action. So just to sum up, Optogen is a new herbicide that, that we're kind of looking at close this year, getting an eye on. I, I don't see where it's gonna necessarily replace something else because of what can, it can bring in the table. You know, the, the problem weeds we have, the nuts edge, it's okay on, nothing to write home about. Smell melon didn't seem to provide us any, any greater control than what we currently get out of Valor. But it'd be another option and another, another potential mode of action we have, but you're gonna have to work it in with some dual command and things like that. We're very fortunate at the LSU Ag Center. We have a, a number of commodity boards who support our research. They see the value in our research and the answers we're getting them and the integral part we play and then being able to maintain profitable operations. And Sweet Potato is, is no different. The Sweet Potato Commission provides a good deal of funding to, for my program. It helps me uh, buy supplies in my program, hire people within my program to allow us to get the maximum data we can get to the producers for them to utilize on farm. They do a great job of supporting us and I'd like to thank them for the support that they continue to provide us. And with the LSU Ag Center, Northeast Research Station, I'm Donnie Miller. Ooh.